Hello class, Mr. Linder here. Let's talk about respiratory gas laws. So from chemistry, you're probably familiar with the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. So in this equation, P stands for pressure, V stands for volume, The N in the equation is for moles. R represents a constant. And that constant is 8.3145 joules per mole Kelvin. And then the T stands for temperature. And we want to make sure that the temperature is in Kelvin. So when you did calculations in chemistry, you could use the ideal gas law and solve for uh, various components of this equation. If you know the volume and the moles and the temperature of a gas, then you could calculate pressure because you can rearrange the ideal gas law. So if we wanted to solve for pressure, the ideal gas law would be pressure is equal to NRT divided by V. And what's nice about uh, the ideal gas law is you can use it to solve for a number of variables. Uh, if you knew the pressure and the moles and the temperature but didn't know the volume, you could solve for volume. The ideal gas law comes from several other laws. So Boyle's law, Avogadro's laws, uh, and Charles' laws are all used to uh, combine together to form the ideal gas law. So in physiology, we take a look at Boyle's law. And Boyle's law is P1 V1 equals P2 V2. And what Boyle's law uh, allows us to take a look at is what happens to uh, pressure when you change the volume. And it turns out that pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. So if you were to increase the volume, you would see a decrease in pressure. And if you were to decrease the volume, you would see an increase in pressure. And so using Boyle's law, if you knew three of the variables, you could solve for uh, the fourth variable. For example, if you know the starting pressure, P1, and you know the starting volume, V1, and if you knew the final volume, V2, then you could use this equation to solve for P2, the pressure. And again, it's just rearranging the equation. So if we wanted to know P2, the final pressure, we would look at P1 times V1 divided by V2. And that would tell us the final pressure. So if you know the initial pressure and the initial volume, and you know what the final volume is going to be, then you could calculate the final pressure. So make sure you have a calculator for these as you do examples uh, in the book. So Boyle's law, though, comes down to do we understand the relationship between pressure and volume? And we can also see that relationship in the ideal gas law. Pressure on the top of the equation, volume on the bottom of the equation. So again, that shows us that inverse relationship. And that's important in the respiratory system when we're talking about ventilation. If you decrease the volume of the thoracic cavity, you can increase the intrapulmonary pressure, and that helps us to exhale. And vice versa when you inhale. When you inhale, you increase the volume, thereby decreasing the intrapulmonary pressure, and so you can inhale. And so understanding these gas law relationships allows us to understand how the respiratory mechanics work. Another law to take a look at is Dalton's law. Dalton's law looks at total pressure. So the total pressure 
of a gas, okay, so total pressure, is actually equal to the partial pressures of all the gases that make up the mixture. So we have the partial pressure, if we're talking about the atmosphere, we'd have the partial pressure of nitrogen in the atmosphere, plus the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere, plus the partial pressure of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and so forth. Those are the three major gases that we can look at in the atmosphere. So if the atmosphere had a total pressure of 760 millimeters of mercury, we could determine what the individual partial pressures are that make up that total pressure if we know the percentage of the gas in the atmosphere. For example, oxygen makes up 21% of the atmosphere, and nitrogen makes up 78% of the atmosphere. And carbon dioxide typically makes up about 0.03% of the atmosphere. And so if we wanted to determine the partial pressures of each of these gases as it relates to the total pressure, we could simply calculate. For oxygen, it'd be 760 times 0.21. That's 21% as a decimal. And that would tell us the partial pressure of oxygen in the atmosphere. And it just so happens I have my calculator. And so 760 times 0.21 gives us 159.6 millimeters of mercury for the partial pressure of oxygen. Because okay. oxygen contributes to the total pressure of the gas mixture according to Dalton's law. <clears throat> we could do the same thing for nitrogen. <clears throat> it would be 760 times 0.78. And that would tell us the partial pressure of nitrogen in the atmosphere. So 760 times 0.78 gives us 592.8 millimeters of mercury of partial pressure of nitrogen. And that makes sense because nitrogen makes up 78% of the atmosphere, so it has a larger partial pressure number than the 21% of oxygen in the atmosphere. And we could do the same thing for carbon dioxide. 760 times 0.0003 would tell us the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, which is going to be a very small amount, 760 times 0 0.0003, and we get 0 0.23 millimeters of mercury of pressure. Okay, so Dalton's law basically says that the total pressure is equivalent to the sum of all the partial pressures. And so when the pressure of the mixture changes, then the partial pressures are going to be different as well. If you go up in elevation, right, if we increase in elevation, let's say we go to 5,000 feet in elevation, then the total pressure in the atmosphere is going to be less. So let's say the total pressure uh, in the atmosphere is only, let's say, 700 millimeters of mercury. Therefore, the partial pressures then of each gas are going to be different. 21% of 700, 78% of 700, 0.03% of 700, and you'll have different partial pressures uh, for each gas in the atmosphere. Okay, so that's Dalton's law. The last law to take a look at is Henry's law. Henry's law looks at solubility. So solubility of a gas, let's say solubility in water. And so the equation is the partial pressure of the gas is equal to Henry's constant times the molar concentration of the gas. So P equals HV times M. 
being partial pressure of the gas, right? So partial pressure, what we were just talking about, partial pressure of the gas. HV, which is a constant. However, that constant is different for each gas. So I wrote a couple constants for you. This is the constant for oxygen. This is Henry's constant for oxygen. 769.23 liters atmospheres over moles. This is the constant for carbon dioxide. Why do we have different constants? Well, gases have different solubilities in solution. So the solubility of oxygen is different than the solubility of carbon dioxide, which is different than the solubility of nitrogen. If you were going to compare those three gases, Carbon dioxide has a greater solubility than oxygen does. And they both have a greater solubility than nitrogen does. So in the atmosphere, nitrogen is the least soluble. And that would be important when we're talking about respiratory gases entering into our lungs and how soluble they are uh, into our cardiovascular system. Nitrogen has a very low uh, solubility at normal atmospheric pressures. Oxygen would be in the middle. And then carbon dioxide has the greatest solubility. So it's easier for carbon dioxide to enter the cardiovascular system than it is for oxygen to enter the cardiovascular system, which partially explains to you why oxygen utilizes hemoglobin as a means of transport in the cardiovascular system because it's harder to move oxygen in water. It's not as soluble. Carbon dioxide easily enters into the water because it's much more soluble in the cardiovascular system. And then nitrogen being the least soluble. And so you can use Henry's law to calculate uh, either molar concentrations or partial pressure concentrations based on Henry's constants. So for example, if we knew the partial pressure of a gas and we wanted to determine the molar concentration within a solution, we would take the partial pressure divided by Henry's constant. Okay? And you have to make sure, of course, that the partial pressure is in atmospheres if you're using these constants given here, liters, atmospheres, moles. You'd want to make sure that the partial pressure is given in atmospheres and then you could use Henry's constant to calculate the molar concentration. So why is understanding that important? Well, if we look at Dalton's laws and Henry's laws, we can look at scuba diving. Okay. Scuba diving is an interesting concept, uh, a fun activity that people like to do, but physiologically things can change. Uh, just as partial pressures can change as you increase in elevation, also if you go underwater okay, and you're going below sea level, you're going to see a change in the overall pressure. Uh, you may have noticed that when you go underwater, there's an increase in pressure okay, on the body. And so if you're increasing the total pressure, then you're also changing the partial pressures of the gas. So you're changing the partial pressure of oxygen, you're changing the partial pressure of nitrogen, uh, which is in the mixture of gases that you're breathing while you scuba dive. If you change the partial pressures, then you're also going to be changing how much of it enters the cardiovascular system based on Henry's law, which looks at uh, the molar concentration within a solution. So if we change the partial pressure, we're going to change the molar concentration that's solubilizing in our blood. And that's important to us because that means that nitrogen that's normally not soluble in our blood will show an increased solubility when you go underwater. And why do you have an increased solubility? Because you're increasing the overall pressure uh, of those gases, and therefore there's going to be a subsequent increase in solubility as well. So those are gas laws uh, that are going to help you understand the respiratory system. I hope that helps. Take care. Bye.